I'd like to uh, call on uh, Rebecca Walsack, who uh, works with the uh, humanitarian uh, organization Interpares, who's been doing work in Myanmar, uh, humanitarian work in Myanmar for years, uh, dealing with uh, persecuted communities. Rebecca? Thank you. I would, I'd like to start by acknowledging that we are standing today on unceded traditional land of the Anishinaabe Algonquin people. And that is particularly important because we are talking about land being stolen. This is a story that is very familiar to Rohingya. It's very familiar to people throughout Burma, land being stolen from them. So, as Farid said, I work at InterParis. We're actually not a humanitarian organization. We're a social justice organization. And we've been working with people from Burma since the early 1990s. And that's because, unfortunately, the situation in Burma, the situation for Rohingya, is not new. What we are recognizing today, the one-year anniversary, it's not because this has only been going on for one year. This has been going on for decades. It has become extreme in the last year. And it is not only going on for Rohingya, it is going on throughout the country. Last night I was working on a report um, for our work over the last six months. And we had to write down some of what was happening in Burma over the last six months. And I was writing about the fact that the, one of the worst perpetrators of human rights abuses Forward against Rohingya, that, that battalion has now moved up to Kachin State, where they are continuing their practices in Kachin State. There were six female medics who are Ta'ang. Ta'ang is another ethnicity in Burma. Six female medics who were found in a grave. They had been raped and tortured by the Tatmada, by Burma's army. This is happening up in the north. In Karen State, another state in Burma, the military is building a road. Thousands of people are being displaced. In Chin State, the government is in continuing to practice residential schools that are, they could be modeled on the residential schools that were put in place here in Canada. So I'm not telling you this to compare atrocities. We should never compare. But I'm telling you this because I think it's really important that we look at the big picture. This is decades long, and we are seeing the result of a plan. Burma's regime has always had a nation-building plan that involves having one country with one language, one ethnicity, and one religion. That is the plan, and that is what they are implementing. Several years ago, I was asked to speak before a committee here on the hill about what was happening to Rohingya. And at the time, I consulted a Rohingya woman that I know, what's the most important thing to say? And one of the things she said was, tell them to use our name. And it is striking how many humanitarian organizations, how many diplomats in Burma still are not using the name Rohingya. They're being complicit as far as I'm concerned. Silence is complicit with erasing the Rohingya. We cannot be silent. And I would say the same in terms of using the word genocide. We know what is happening, and we need to use the word. We need to say and articulate it, and our government needs to say it and act.